Palm Sunday. Yay! Yay! Oh, Anna. I'm Aaron Fosbury, and my assistant worship leader is Lucas Fosbury. All right, please stand for the ringing of the church bell and the lighting of the altar candles. Now we'll have our quarrel in Detroit. Seven hundred. You may be seated. <laughs> One verse. I don't know where to go. <clears throat> no, no, I need for him to see. Thank you, choir. Um, please stand for our responsive Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my ears are sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have, I have passed out of mind, out of mind like one who is dead. dead. I, I have become, become like a broken vessel. vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. You may be seated. Good morning, Lord. Good morning. Today's a new day, a chance for a new start. Yesterday is gone, and with it. Any regrets, <coughs> mistakes, or failures I may have experienced, it's a good day to be glad and give. Thanks. And I do, Lord. Thank you for today, a new <coughs> opportunity to love, give, and be. All that you want me to <coughs> be. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> Please stand and sing the Lord's Prayer.
anyone has any announcements, you can head up to the microphone. Um, this week is Holy Week, so Sunday the choir is going to run through the cantata following worship. Wednesday is Lentil, Lenten Bible study at 6 p.m. Uh, there's a worship team meeting on Thursday and a choir cantata dress rehearsal. Friday, April 15th, the food sense orders are due by 1 p.m. And we have the Good Friday Choral Cantata at 7 p.m. On Sunday, we'll have the sunrise service at 6 a.m., followed by the Easter worship at 9.45 a.m. Um, our web sponsors this week are Judy Beasley and Cheryl Crass in honor of all that Don Dyack does around the church. Nice job, Don. The Vosbury family in honor of Aidan Trowbridge and Joan Vosbury's birthdays. Uh, thank you to Michelle DeLine for her article in the April Chimes. And in honor of Don Dyack again for all he does for the church. Right, Thanks, Don. Um, thank you to Noah's Nursery School for all their gifts of book bookmarks and other symbols they made to celebrate Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter. Thank you, Noah's. Yay. Uh, birthdays this week. We have Debbie Munger and Anthony Malambri. Uh, John Mahoney, Taylor Gerbig, Isabella Raponi, Kendall Raponi, Clarissa Crast, and Andy Holden. Happy birthday. Go ahead. I just want to remind everybody that today, fellowship by SOS. So please, we got some. I know, <laughs> I know, and it's all sugar. So uh, everybody come. We want to see you because we're in such a great day. We're all together. So please come. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, boy. You're the best for last, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was told ladies first, so we'll save the best for last. Um, my name is Emily Carasquillo. I am the choir director. Happy Palm Sunday. Um, so the choir, as indicated in the announcements today, um, we will be meeting um, after church today to run through the cantata. Um, if we have an opportunity, I will try to print out um, readings for people that have volunteered. We are still looking for volunteers. If you would like to read something and have your little moment um, at the cantata, we would love to have you. We want to get as many people involved as possible. Kids, adults, doesn't matter. I would love to have you read. Um, so if you are reading, I would like you to come a little bit early on Friday just to make sure we know what's going on, the order of everything, who reads first and all that stuff. Um, so it starts at 7 on Friday, so if you guys could come at like 6.40, that would be fine. Um, and that's it. I, was, I also just wanted to thank everyone that came out to see the Adams Family this past weekend. It was awesome, and it, I'm so sad it's over, but um, I'm very grateful for all the support, so thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Tom Brown, and uh, this is a public service announcement. You know, a lot of us do not realize the history of this city is immense. It's an amazing, amazing history that we have here in Fulton, New York. Uh, it was known as the city that the Depression missed. We had so much business and so many factories. Well, I'm president of the Friends of History. That's our uh, local museum. And uh, it's located on the east side on First Street. It's 177. Is it South First Street, Sue? Yeah. Thank you. She's the treasurer of the uh, organization. But we're opening up on April 13th. Uh, that will be our opening date. And we're open Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. It's phenomenal. It's got so much history of this city. How many of you remember the Dizzy Block? All of us old Fultonians. Well, we have a tremendous aerial view of that Dizzy Block. And it's great to go around and see. We had over 100 and some businesses here for many, many years. So. I publicly welcome you uh, if you have any questions. Uh, we do have a, a ramp for the handicapped. Uh, it's two floors, and it's just chock full of history of Fulton, New York. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to our Palm Sunday service. A special welcome to any that might be visiting uh, those we might not have seen for a while, we are really, really um, pleased and delighted to have you. I trust that we will have a wonderful time together now and at fellowship time 
when the service is over. Um, let us say welcome to our worship leaders, um, Sister Erin Vosbury and her son Lucas. Thank you so much for accepting this responsibility. We have already begun to feel um, the presence of the Spirit among us. Um, I just want to um, emphasize that this is Holy Week. It's, um, it's going to be a short week for us. Um, today, Wednesday, we will have a Holy Wednesday or Lenten Bible study. It's going to be at 6 p.m. right here. We usually meet here um, downstairs. And we also send out a Zoom link for those who might want to join, um, you know, by Zoom. That link comes out in our announcements on Wednesday morning, so look out for that. Now, Thursday this week is Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday. There will not be a worship team meeting. We had that last week, but the choir is going to take that opportunity to do a dress rehearsal for our grand um, Good Friday choir cantata, and that is what our choir director was speaking about earlier. And we really would like to see as many people as possible. So those of you who are here today, those who are viewing, if you can join us and um, you know, tell others about it so that we can have, I would like to say, a full house. You think we can fill this place on Good Friday as we commemorate the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ? So keep that in mind. Now I see here, that on Sunday we're having that early service, that sunrise service. And notice, it's S-O-N, sunrise service. Um, and that's going to take place right here in the parking lot. Um, the note here is weather permitting, but regardless of the weather, we are going to be there. Of course, that's where we live, so we're not too far. So we look forward to having persons attend that sunrise service. And then, of course, we meet a little later at 9.45 for our regular um, Resurrection Day service with Holy Communion um, next Sunday at 9.45. Finally, um, today, well, maybe not finally, but today the Lenten offering is due. We've been speaking about this this um, $1 a day for each day in Lent. Um, I was listening to the recording last time I made this announcement, and I think I said $40 a day for Lent. <laughs> but it is really $1 a day, so it should amount to 40 Of course, if you can put more, that's fine. And we have decided that this offering, uh, we will send it to... UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and it will go to aid the people of Ukraine. So it's a worthy cause, and this is our Lenten sacrificial offering, which is due today. And please take some of those um, tokens that the Noah's Nursery made so that we can observe today and the rest of the week. Please take them. They did a fine job. You have yours. Thank you very much. So welcome to all of you, especially those who have recovered and who are here today. Now let us sing the birthday song for our celebrants. We don't want to overlook them. And then um, our dear sister Erin will continue. Happy birthday for our celebrants. Thank you that you are in Infinite. infinitely constant, consistently. consistently and perfectly wise. You have said that, Lord. Thank you that you are infinitely great. <laughs> Whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. 
You have said that we should give according to what we have. Help us to bring our offerings with any a eager heart, not as a accordant comparison with others, but as a act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. loud Hosanna. be seated. And now for, please, uh, is this saying or? Uh, it wasn't, okay. Please um, repeat our Passion Palm Sunday prayer with me. 
Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him this, the name that, that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Uh, would the children like to come up? I got a little story for you today. Children and you. Come on up, Luke. Come on up. I won't bite, I promise. Or will you? I might. Only on special occasions. Sometimes I dance, but not today. All right, so it's Palm Sunday. Have you ever wondered, you know, why we call it Palm Sunday? So I want to tell you the story of people waving palms to Jesus. As Jesus came closer to Jerusalem, he asked two of his disciples to go ahead of him. He said, when you get to town, you will see a donkey tied up. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks you about taking the donkey, just tell them the Lord needs it and he will bring it back as soon as he's done with it. So the disciples did as Jesus asked. They found the donkey tied at the doorway. As they were untying it, some people were standing nearby visiting. They didn't recognize the men and asked, What are you doing? Why are you untying the donkey? They replied, just as Jesus had told them to, explaining that the Lord needed it, and the people let them go. When they brought the donkey to Jesus, some of the disciples took off their coats and laid them on the donkey's back. They did this out of respect for Jesus. Then Jesus rode on the donkey towards Jerusalem. As he was traveling, some people saw Jesus coming and came running towards him. They had heard he might be coming and wanted to see him because he had just helped a dead man come back to life. Can you imagine that? One by one, they laid their coats on the ground for the donkey to step on. Even the people that weren't wearing coats ran to the fields and trees nearby and cut palm branches and laid them down. These people knew that Jesus was special, just like we know Jesus is special. It was like when a king or a queen would come to town and the people would roll out a red carpet for him or her to step on. This is what these people did for Jesus when they laid down their coats and branches. As they got even closer to the town, more and more people noticed Jesus. A crowd surrounded him and started to shout praises for him, for all the miracles he had done. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. The word Hosanna means save us. They said this to, because Jesus was helping them and doing amazing things. They wanted to praise him. They wanted him to keep helping them. Some men named Pharisees, these men thought they were important. A lot of the people listened to them. They heard the crowd praising God. They said to Jesus, teacher, why don't you tell these people to stop praising you as if you were a god? The Pharisees thought Jesus was getting too much attention from the people. They wanted to be the most important, but everyone was listening to Jesus instead. Jesus replied, if they were quiet now, even the rocks would cry out. Even the rocks knew that he was God after all. Jesus did make them. Now Jesus could see Jerusalem, and it made him very sad. He came to help the people, but no one realized that he was God, and they didn't accept him. What do you think about that story? Does it make you sad? No? Does it make you happy that we have Jesus? Very good. 
Thank you for listening to my story. And I'm going to offer a blessing for our children and young people. And you can remain in the service today for the Palm Sunday reflection and what will follow. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the children and youth who are present today. When we think of this day and we think of the crowd that gathered to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, we believe that among them were children and youth, people of younger years. And we pray for our children and young people here that they will grow up to welcome Jesus into their lives, into their hearts, that they will accept him as their king, will serve him and worship him all the days of their life. Thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for the homes they represent, for their parents and guardians and all who have the care of them, that they will continue to nurture and train them towards the way that you would want them to go. So bless them today. Shower your favor upon them. Grant them your peace now and always. For Christ's sake, amen. Amen. We want to wish you well. I know most of you are on spring recess, so we trust that you will have a wonderful time. Um, enjoy your spring recess, and um, please, if you can, participate in the events for Holy Week. Um, you heard Emily say that she has some other readings. Perhaps you want to get one of those readings. We'd like to hear your young voices reading at the Good Friday Cantata. So God bless you. You may return to your seats with your parents, your guardians at this time. Thank you. And let us put our hands together for Erin and Lucas Bosbury. Thank you so much for leading us today. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That reading or those verses are found in Philippians chapter 2, 10 and 11. It was Palm Sunday, but because of a sore throat, five-year-old Johnny stayed home from church with a sitter. When the family returned home, they were carrying several palm fronds like we have today. Johnny asked them what they were for. People held them over Jesus' head as he walked by, his father told him. Wouldn't you know it, Johnny fumed, the one Sunday I don't go and he shows up. Well, Jesus is here today. He is present. And today, my friends, the church worldwide is commemorating the 
triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The day, as we have heard, is commonly called Palm Sunday, but it is also called Passion Sunday. It is the first day of Holy Week, or the beginning of the last week of Jesus' life before his crucifixion. It was also the beginning of the Jewish Passover when many gathered in Jerusalem to observe the festival. If you read through the New Testament Gospels, you will discover that all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, have something to say about that entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And it, was, it is obvious from what they say that what happened on that occasion created much excitement, created quite a stir. Jesus was the center of attention. And oh, that Jesus would be the center of attention for all of us. That we would make him the center of our life. That we would focus on him. That we would look to him. And on this occasion, he certainly took center stage. Oh, that Jesus could take center stage in each life today. Jesus was so central to what happened on that occasion that the gospel writer, Matthew, writes, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? Who is this? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus for you? What does Jesus mean to you? Now, it appears from what we read in the Gospels that Jesus had planned this entry into Jerusalem, that it was no haphazard thing. In the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he gives his disciples clear instructions about finding a donkey and bringing it to him. Only in the gospel according to St. John do we read something slightly different. John has Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. So that's a little different from what the other gospel writers say. Because according to the other gospel writers, he sent his disciples to get this animal on which he rode into Jerusalem. That said, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, the animal of his choice, created an atmosphere of joy and anticipation. When, when you read through what the Gospels have to say about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, you get the distinct impression that the people welcomed Jesus joyfully, that there was much expectation, much anticipation as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. The people rolled out a carpet of cloaks and leafy branches that they had cut from trees or the fields, as one um, translation puts it, that they spread along the way. And as Jesus came along, they shouted those words that we shout today. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Clearly, they treated Jesus like a king. They were giving him what we might call a hero's welcome, a royal welcome. 
Now, my sisters and brothers, there are some scholars who tell us that there was another parade or another procession that was entering the gates of the city from the opposite direction, from the west. Apparently, Jesus' procession came from the east, and from the west, there was another procession taking place. This parade or this procession was made up of the Roman legion that had finished the march from the town of Caesarea, and they were now entering the gates of Jerusalem from the west of the city. Pilate, the Roman governor, was with the troops. And I can imagine what that must have been like. There must have been contrasting processions. Pilate and his troops were a show of might and power as they march with their horses, their weapons, and other military um, equipment, they were the opposite to Jesus, or of Jesus, in whose procession humility, peace, nonviolence were on full display. Jesus rode on a donkey, and his armor was the armor of God, truth, righteousness, peace, and salvation. His way is the way of sacrifice, suffering, and servanthood. These processions represented opposing values, opposing kingdoms, and their conflict is what drove the events of that week. When those opposing kingdoms come together, then the conflict created is what drove the events that we witness throughout this week that we call Holy Week. And my friends, it is a very good practice to go through Holy Week step by step. We come to Palm Sunday, it is good to see the conflict that was generated throughout that week that came to a head, that culminated with Jesus' crucifixion on the Friday that we call Good Friday. So in our passage for today, the passage from Philippians, we read, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, what a vision, my friends. A vision expressed in Philippians chapter 2 that every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know what I think? That would be revolutionary. The world would be a different world, a better world, when every knee bows and every tongue confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. Just imagine what a new world it would be. How different and how much better the world would be. You know, the earliest Christian creed was just three words long. You know, nowadays we say the Apostles' Creed and the, the Nicene Creed and those lengthy creeds. But very early on, the Christian creed was a simple statement, Jesus is Lord. That's all one needed to say in order to declare one's position when it came to Christianity or to Christ, that Jesus is Lord. That was it. 
So on this Palm or Passion Sunday, let us reflect on what Paul says here. Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bend, should bend, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. First, my friends, that name Jesus. What does the name Jesus mean to you? It is good to know that the name Jesus is derived from the Hebrew name Joshua, which means God is Savior. And in the gospel according to St. Matthew, the angel appeared to Joseph concerning the child that Mary um, had conceived. And the angel said to Joseph, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus is Savior. Jesus came to save. He came to deliver. He came to rescue us from our sins, from sin. And so the shouts of Hosanna on that day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, as the crowd shouted Hosanna on that day, it was a prayer. Think of it as a prayer, a prayer for Jesus to save them, a prayer for Jesus to intervene in their situation, a prayer to rescue them. You see, the people were living, um, their, 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 their place was an occupied place, occupied by the Roman um, authorities. And so they were, pray, they were crying out to Jesus, to intervene in their situation, to save them from the hands of their enemies, to rescue them. Jesus is Savior. But then we have that title, Christ. Jesus Christ. And that title is an important title for us to reflect on today as we observe Palm Sunday. Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. I'm sure you've heard that word so many times. And Messiah means anointed one. Interestingly, my friends, the practice of anointing in Hebrew had special connection to prophets, priests, and kings. They were usually anointed as they took office. So to think of Jesus as the Christ or the Messiah was to think of him as an anointed prophet, priest, and king. William Barclay, in his book entitled the, um, Jesus as they saw him, writes the following, and I quote, the idea of Messiah was deeply ingrained in Jewish thought, end of quote. You see, my friends, the Jews had this dream. They had this longing that one day God would send them a Messiah to bring prosperity and peace and to restore the nation to glory. And that this Messiah would be someone from the line of David. No wonder on that Palm Sunday, they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he uh, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna to the, the, to the son of David. See, David was their favorite king. And under the reign of David, the nation experienced great prosperity and peace. And so they always had this dream and this longing that one day God would send them a Messiah from the line of David. So Jesus took the claim of Messiahship 
but he filled it with new meaning as Jesus often does. And what do you know? Many of the people rejected him. And it is sad, my friends, that even to this day, people reject Jesus, the one who can fulfill all our longings, who can fulfill all our dreams. He is still rejected to this day. And finally, the title, Lord. Remember what we are thinking about today. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Savior. He is the Anointed One. He is Lord. Every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My friends, to call Jesus Lord is to acknowledge his rule over our lives. He is master and we are subject to him. I, find, I found it very interesting um, reading um, a, a sharp contrast here. Because under Roman rule, and I told you that Jerusalem was occupied at this time, um, citizens were expected to declare their loyalty to Caesar. They were expected to say, Caesar is Lord. And once you made that declaration, it really didn't matter who you worshipped afterwards. But the Jews, faithful Jews, resisted that. They were not prepared to declare Caesar as Lord. And so it is in that context, my friends, when we understand that kind of background, we appreciate even more the, Christ, the early Christian creed, that it is Jesus who is Lord, not Caesar or some other um, figure, but Jesus is Lord. And to call Jesus Lord is to declare that he is master of my life and that I am subject to his rule. Oh, that all would declare him as Lord. What a difference that would make in our world. Because we would be subject to his values, subject to what he has taught us. Augustine, I'm sure you've heard of him, one of the great fathers of the early church, had a dramatic conversion to Christianity. And then he became a bishop in North Africa. St. Augustine emphasized man's need for grace. We all need the grace of God. There go I but for the grace of God. And it was Augustine who said, Jesus Christ is not valued at all until he is valued above all. I would like you to say that with me today. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is not valued at all, is not valued at all. Unless, unless he is valued, he is valued above, all. above all. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure, we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. 
Name him, Christians, name him, with love strong as death, but with awe and wonder, and with bated breath. He is God the Savior, he is Christ the Lord, ever to be worshipped, trusted, and adored. In your hearts enthrone him, there let him subdue all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown him as your captain in temptations all. Let his will enfold you with his light and power. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And now we'll call on the choir to render an item. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thank you so much. As we um, prepare to conclude our service and move into our fellowship time, we say welcome to our online viewers. 
and we receive the greetings um, from them, several online viewers wishing us happy Palm Sunday. Thank you so much for your wishes. We wish the same for you. Uh, we continue to pray for our first responders, farmers, truck drivers, and other elected officials. And then we have from Linda Russell, Happy Palm Sunday. Please say a prayer for my father, Bruce Phelps, as he works through rehabilitation, as well as for Matty Burdick and myself, that we regain our health quickly. Thank you so much. And if there are others with um, special requests, as we go to prayer now, we ask you to um, bring your requests to mind. Um, if there are persons for whom you would like to pray, um, I, see, I see Art at the back there, and I know his sister Beulah is still at Upstate um, Hospital, so we remember her in our prayers. And there are others who have asked us to um, remember them. We're happy to have the Aqua Vivas here. Um, this Sunday, we missed you last week, and we um, prayed for you. And um, I see others that are here, some of our students who are probably on um, spring break, um, some good friends of mine that are present. We are really happy to see all of you who are here today. I, I see um, our brother Joe has um, his clan with him, um, his growing clan, um, their daughter and grandchildren. Really happy to see them. And um, others we've missed, um, Finley and, and, and um, Everly, we've missed you. It's good to have you today. And um, all of you, we love you all. We appreciate you. And we ask God's blessings upon you. So as we pray now, um, if you can think of any persons that you would like to lift up. I know Sue Brown. We, where, where's Sue? I thought I saw Sue earlier. Yeah, Sue is there. Good to see you. Um, all recovered and doing well. And um, have you had your surgery yet, Liz? I don't think so. In, in another three weeks. Okay, Liz is awaiting surgery. And there may be others, but um, these are some that I know. And I would like us to join now in um, praying for all of these persons. There's Kathy Smith. There's Judith McCarthy. Travis Wright. Rosemary Collins, but you're there. Uh, nice to see you. Um, Bruce Phelps, Phyllis Alliger, Linda Russell, Matty Burdick, Marilyn Crass. So we got good news about Marilyn, um, that she is now home and, and doing much better. So we're happy to hear that. That's Dan's mother, Daniel Crass' mother. There's Sandy Foltz. Um, she's coming along. Slowly, okay. Not out of the woods yet, as you would put it. Okay, so my dear sisters and brothers, um, the Lord be with you. Yes, I, I just um, saw my dear friend um, Chelsea there. We are continuing to pray for Chelsea, that that pain will be um, taken away. So it's good to see you in church, Chelsea. Let us pray. Let us pray for our web sponsors. Uh, we give thanks for Judy Beasley and Cheryl Crass, the Vosbury family. We thank you, O gracious God, for Michelle Deline and for our brother Don Dyack. Thank you for those who support this ministry from week to week so that what we do here can emanate so that others not present can share, can participate in worship with us. So we thank you for these persons, Lord, and we pray that you will continue to bless them and pray that they will continue to be cheerful and, and generous givers um, to your work. We pray that you will strengthen our brother Don um, and our sister Michelle Deline in their service to this congregation. We lift up our celebrants, Aidan 
um, Trowbridge and Joan Vosbury and all the others whom we acknowledge today, praying, Lord, that they will make you the center and source of their life, that they will find in you all the joy and the fulfillment that they seek. So bless all these persons today, our web sponsors and those they recognize and those who serve in our congregation. We lift up those who are sick today, um, persons who are still on the mend, those who are waiting surgery, and those who are um, dealing with various conditions. We pray for them, the names we have already mentioned, Lord. And if there are others, I pause now so that members of the congregation can lift up those names. Jack Durfee. Carl the Star. Heather. Lord, we thank you that your air is not heavy, that you cannot hear. Your arm is not short, that you cannot help. So we bring all these persons to you today those we have named in this service, praying, O oh, great physician, that you will reach out and touch them and make them whole again. We pray for all who are bereaved that they will find comfort and hope. Thank you, Lord, that you raised Jesus from the dead and in him we have the assurance that death is not the end of those who trust in you. We pray for students, faculty, and staff now on spring recess, that this will be a time of renewal and refreshment for them. For all who have left home to go on trips, we pray that they will have an enjoyable time and remain safe. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia, that there will be a peaceful end to the war now being fought. Be with all who have become refugees, that they will find safe refuge, and that all who have been injured will experience healing, and all whose loved ones have been killed in the war will have hope and find comfort. Gracious God, we pray for the church as we observe Holy Week, that we will all be drawn closer to you, we pray for the Reverend Ruth Warner and her husband as they prepare to move into this congregation and community. Gracious God, as we have come today to observe Palm Sunday, we pray that each one will declare Jesus Christ is Lord and that we will live according to his will and your will. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We close as we sing, All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, 280 in the hymnal.
Lord God, we go forth in your strength to be strong, in your wisdom to be wise, in your grace to find our sufficiency, in your Holy Spirit to abide in love, joy, and peace. Thine is the kingdom, O God, the power and the glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon us this holy week and always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to the fellowship hall for we fellowship time. Sorry, <laughs>